بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه وخاتم أنبيائه ورسله سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين أما بعد فقد قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of the souls and the enlightenment of the hearts and for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited Savior عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف in lighting your souls and the atmosphere with the recitation of صلوات of محمد وآل محمد Respected scholars, elders, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It was a powerful yet emotional scene. This lady walks inside the room. In front of her lies the body of her son, wrapped. He was martyred defending the shrine of the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib. She looks at him, she approaches, she's smiling a few days ago. She approaches the body, kisses her son, and says to him, well done, you have made me proud. On the day of judgment, I stand with pride and honor before the great lady, the daughter of Rasulullah. Then she lifts her head, looks at the people around her, and says one thing, لبيك يا زينب. She cries out with the name of the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Then she witnesses that there are people who are crying around her. She says, why are you crying? To a lady who is shedding the tears, noticing the scene. She said, we do not cry for anyone other than the family of the Prophet. And she came, placed her head on the body of her son. A young man lifted her head, looked up to the heavens, and said, Ilahi, taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban. O Allah, accept this sacrifice from us. An example that demonstrates the deep and profound inspiration that this great, this great lady, the mountain of patience, Sayyida Zainab salawatullahi wa salamu alayha. Has demonstrated for people throughout the times. Indeed, it is difficult for any individual to dissect and to speak about the personality of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. To be able to be motivated from her life, from her words, from her actions, is not very difficult indeed. There are so many ways in which we can become inspired. You look at the epic and the story of Karbala, and one thing strikes you, and that is from the beginning of the journey of Imam al Hussein, from Medina to Mecca, on all the way to Karbala, in major events, you'll find Sayyida Zainab playing a pivotal role an important individual who stood to support her brother in every capacity, in every way that she could. In Medina, she rallied the family, looked after them as they were to depart on this long, difficult journey. Throughout the way to Karbala, she would be with her brother Imam al Hussein, supporting him in all ways. In Karbala, when they reached, when people would come to seek permission to enter the army of Imam al Hussein, like Habib ibn Mudahir, they would come to Zainab bin Ta'ali and would ask her permission. On the 10th of Muharram, there she was standing as a great support, whereby one after the other, she would witness the companions and the Ahlul Bayt going to the battlefield and not 
returning, her own family members. And therefore, you'll find that Sayyida Zainab indeed is a beacon of inspiration and motivation for all. Yet there is one thing that people may ask, and that is, tell me about this lady. Who is she? Who is she compared to? Because we have a narration from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who himself named Zainab and said, that she resembles her grandmother Khadija, the wife of the Holy Prophet. Notice this, that the scholars say, just like how Fatima to Zahra was Ummu Abiha to her father Rasulullah, Zainab al Kubra was Ummu Abiha to Amir al Mu'mini. That you find that the relationship that existed from the early age of Zainab with Ali ibn Abi Talib was that of respect, with that of love, and that of learning from the position of the commander of the faithful. Indeed, if you are looking for exemplary lessons in life about submission, then you look at Zainab. When she stands before Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad in Kufa, and when he asks her, كَيْفَ رَأَيْتِ صُنْعَ اللَّهِ بِأَخِيكِ How did you find what God did to your brother? She responds emphatically in a beautiful sentence. مَا رَأَيْتُ إِلَّا جَمِيلًا Everything I witnessed was beautiful. Why? Because in the eyes of Zainab, everything was happening in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plans. Number one, if you are seeking for inspiration as far as devotion, then you look at Zainab. Why? Because before Imam al Hussein left, he would say to her, My dear sister, remember me in your dua and salatul layl, in one narration. Can you imagine that the grandson of the Prophet would speak to Zainab and say to her, That remember me in your prayers? Because when it comes to ibadah, Zainab was indeed the crystallization of submission to her Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're looking for patience, you'll find that Zainab indeed humbled patience as a principle. Why? She would never complain, despite seeing everything that Imam al Hussein witnessed, but more. If you're looking for inspiration when it comes to modesty and chastity, then Zainab upheld the flag of hijab the principle and the obligation of the Islamic dress code of chastity and modesty. When she would look at Zay uh, Yazid and would say that you are ensuring that your wife and family are protected and are veiled whilst you take the veil away from the daughters of the Prophet. And if you're looking for sacrifice, Zainab would present her two sons to be martyred, yet she would not shed a single tear in Karbala. And there is one thing that I wish to focus upon whereby we can draw important lessons, especially in this day and age, from the illustrious life of this great lady. A tool, a skill that you and I require to achieve greatness and success, and that is vision, foresight, ambition. You and I witness, and if we look around us today, we recognize that nobody has achieved anything they wanted in life except that they were visionary. We often hear of visionary people. People who had outstanding visions and they built upon them. Vision is deemed to be a prerequisite for success. It's deemed to be something that you and I must possess and develop in order for us to establish ourselves in all facets in life. If you look at the world of business, if you look at sports, if you look at politics, as well as religion, in all areas, human beings need to possess a clearly defined vision. Question, what is vision? People may ask, we've heard this so many times, that we need to have vision, we need to be visionary individuals. We're told a vision has two things. Number one, it is full of optimism. And number two, it brings belief in a positive change. That vision 
is described to be like a lighthouse which gives us direction, a powerful, vivid picture which moves us to a desirable state. And a vision is absolutely necessary to give you and I a purpose, a sense of meaning. Without a vision, we're like travelers who are walking on the wrong path. And the harder and the longer we walk on this path, the further away are we from the destination. Indeed, you and I need to understand and ask ourselves this soul-searching, hard question. Today, as we recall the great achievements of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her, let's ask ourselves this question. What is my vision? Have I thought about it? And I began to formulate and to build a vision for myself in my life? Or am I satisfied with the status quo? Am I satisfied with what is happening around me? Am I seeing the potential that exists out there? Am I unlocking the hidden secrets in the chaos of the moment, which brings about all the new wonderful possibilities that exists. You ask me a question. This vision that you're talking about, where do we start? Where do we begin? If I do not have a vision, what is the first process? Today, we are told that creating and developing vision and to become visionary requires three important steps. Let's try to understand these and notice how Sayyidah Zainab implemented these emphatically. The first thing is, you and I need to know what is it that we want. What is it that you want? And this is not necessarily only religious advice that we find out there. People who are motivational speakers, people who are leaders tell us, Identify your objective. What is it that you wish to attain and get? The Quran, in fact, clearly demonstrates this. In a beautiful set of ayat that I would like to draw your attention towards, in chapter 17, verses number 18 to 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you and I this question, what is it that you want? Then he answers, according to your answer, Fit your vision within these ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Man kana yuridu al If you want this world solely, just this world, Allah says, then this is what I will give you. Understand what the Almighty says. He says, this is what I will give you. Man kana yuridu al Whomsoever wants this world, we may give him or her what they want in accordance with our plan, in accordance with the decree of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may find people gaining some statuses, getting the wealth that they require, the fame that they want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I give and I take according to his ultimate wisdom. Then he says, but hold on, it doesn't stop there. He then goes on to say, But the result is what? If you're looking only for this world and the satisfaction of this life, then no, you may get to certain places, but the outcome, unfortunately, is chastisement, is punishment with disgrace. Then the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا Whomsoever, however, is building for their hereafter, and at the same time is working for it, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Mufassirin say this is a beautiful verse, because you and I are encouraged continuously to express gratitude and thankfulness to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet in this verse, Allah says, I will become thankful to you if you identify what is it exactly that you're looking for. Number one, if you're looking to build for your hereafter, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will support you, we will help you. And I am grateful to you 
for having that visionary outlook in life. And Allah says, كُلَّنْ نَمُدُّ هَؤُلَاء وَهَؤُلَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكَ وَمَا كَانَ عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْفُورًا We give to these and we give to these. Both individuals, both sets of people, we will give to. And the provisions of Allah are not restricted. Hence the idea emerges at the outset that if you and I wish to develop a vision in life, we have to identify our goals. Where do we want to go? What is it that we wish to establish? That's number one. Number two, in order for our vision to be materialized, we need to understand that the vision begins in the heart. That the vision needs to be sometimes extraordinary. Some scientists say that if your vision is like a pie in the sky, you're in the right direction. Do not be restricted. Think about it in the way of what? In the way of thinking? In the vast capacities that exists out there. That you can achieve. That there is no limit to what you can do. But importantly, the third thing that we need to keep in mind is that we must not keep our visions inside us. How many times you may have come across people, I certainly have, that we speak with people and they have so many ideas. They say, I dream of establishing something. I have these ideas of wanting to do things. Yet the ideas have remained with themselves. They've kept them within themselves. We are told an important part of realizing the manifestation of our visions is to communicate them. Why? Because a vision without action is dream, is a dream. An action without vision is merely passing time. But vision with action can change the world. That is an important realization. And you look at history and you come across examples of people who have truly changed the way we live. Thomas Edison, as an example that comes to mind. Thomas Edison, when he was young, he had only a few months of education. He is, of course, the man who had to his name more than 1,000 patents when it comes to developing the electrical bulb, when it comes to pro uh, producing the motion picture camera, and so many other discoveries and inventions. Now, Thomas Edison, you read about his life. When he was young, he only studied for a few months. Why? Because his teacher said, you're not focused. Your mind wanders off. So he's kicked out of school. His mother, however, had that vision. She trained him at home. And thereafter, he developed a hearing problem. He, was, he couldn't hear properly. He says the reason for it was because when he used to travel when he was young on the train, he used to take his small lab with him and perform chemical experiments. And one day, something exploded. And the train conductor saw him and threw him out of the train. And he said, that's how I lost my hearing. Yet this did not stop him to develop further and realize and potentiate his vision. He would come forward and say that if you're thinking about becoming a genius, then understand this. A genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. That if you want to establish what you have set out to do, you need to start with that inspiration, but you need to materialize it into action. Let's look at Lady Zainab. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayha. This great lady demonstrated her visionary personality in many places, but I would like to focus on two to end with, so that we can take away something from her illustrious life. How many times we've heard of her famous sermon. But do we contextualize it? Here was a man who was the tyrant of his time. A wretched individual. A man who is in the 21st century. Respected by millions, unfortunately. Sadly. Today, as we have individuals who would say, who are so-called scholars in the Muslim world, they come forward and say, that Yazid was a man who did wrong. But you know, he was the caliph. We are not to speak anything about him. And that is a sad reality whereby, why? 
We are told when you do not follow the truth, the truth becomes distorted in your eyes. The Quran is the Furqan. It gives you the ability to distinguish from the right and the false. And when you do not follow the Quran as it should be followed by following the Ahl al-Bayt then what becomes is the difficulty to establishing who are the individuals that we should follow and who are the ones who we should be staying away from. Here we have a wretched individual who has gathered these groups of holy personalities, ridiculing them, poking the face of Imam al Hussein, committing this atrocity, following it by desecrating the Kaaba, violating the sanctity of Medina two years later, and Sayyidina Zainab stands like a mountain of courage and valor and said to him, Wakid Kaida. Zainab had a vision, a vision that we can see materializing throughout time. She said to Yazid, you can do, you can deceive, you can manipulate as much as you want, but by God you will never obliterate our remembrance and our recording by people and I can see that you will be disgraced very, very soon. Your days are numbered and your words are weak. And today we can see this. One day, Sayyidina Zainab, as the second example, she finds, when they are leaving Karbala, she finds Imam Zayn al-Abideen as-Sajjad sallallahu Understandably looking at the bodies. The bodies that have been decapitated. He looks at the bodies in Karbala where they are leaving and she says to him, Mali. <laughs> Why is it that I see you distressed? Oh, the only one who is left from my grandfather, from my father and from my brothers. She witnesses that he is sad. He's upset to see this particular scene. Then she says to him something important. This is found in Kabir Ziyarat. She says to him that I can see people who will establish this place as a place of remembrance. And the grave of your father Hussein shall rise for generations. The flag shall be seen and it will continue from strength to strength. Then she goes to say there will be tyrants who will come one after the other trying to destroy it, trying to obliterate it, but they will never do so because it will become and it will gain strength from strength as time will progress. That is the vision of Zainab. She knew exactly what she was talking about. She recognized the potential that existed out there. Look at the world today. Look at what's happening in Karbala. 15 million individuals walk every year in Arba'in. Absolute devotion, commitment. One of the largest peaceful gatherings in the world. No one is forcing them. I saw it on my own eyes. Young, old, disabled, elderly, all walking for day after day. And they recall the stance taken by Abba Abdullah, by Sayyida Zainab. This unwavering commitment and loyalty. They understand that what Zainab mentioned and her vision indeed is being materialized. And of course, people are attempting to stop this. In an interview recently, they captured some of the terrorists who are trying to blow up people on the way to Karbala. One of them said that in a gathering of our leaders, these wretched individuals who think by killing innocent people, the followers of Ali and Fatima, the lovers of Hussein and Zainab, they can stop their remembrance. They're absolutely wrong. Zainab told their leader Yazid that this will never happen. But they will try, yet they will never be successful. He says that when we were sitting in a meeting, one of them, their leader says, I don't know these Shia. I don't know how we can stop them. Why, they said. They said, even when they're walking towards Karbala and we decapitate their heads, we see their feet and their bodies still walking to Karbala. Can you imagine this love? And this shall never be diminished. Tell me. Today, as we are honoring this great lady, 
there is a need for us to re-examine and scrutinize our thoughts as individuals, as communities, as organizations. What are we doing to build on the great legacy of Sayyida Zainab? What is our vision? How are we going to be the change that we want to see in the world? Let's not wait for others. Let's become inspired by Sayyida Zainab and the Ahl al-Bayt to make that difference to our lives and the lives of others. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين